future gymnastics in this country. It's a youth movement which will put a lot of these teenagers at the top of international competition in the near future, and it's the 1984 Olympics at Los Angeles. The gymnast whose future was considered brightest at the start of the competition, 17-year-old Lisa Zeiss of Chictawaga, New York, but this girl, Mary Lou Renton, 13 years old from Fairmont, West Virginia, has been equally impressive. Another top gymnast, Beth Pope, 15 years old from Little Rock, Arkansas, just 5'1 and 94 pounds. In spite of a rash of slips on the balance beam, the competition has been good with little Mary Lou Renton, a surprise leader, halfway through the event. Let's join Gordon Maddox in Syracuse. Four rounds are rotations in the competition. We're now in the third, and here comes the leader, Mary Lou Renton, Fairmont, West Virginia, 13 years old, 4 foot 7, 88 pounds of dynamite. Watch this lady work. Straight arm, back up rise to a handstand, the only woman I've seen do that. Here comes a rear ball. Boy, is she strong. Now here's the hip circle handstand, getting set up for her dismount. A toe on, front somersault to a very nice landing. You recall now Mary Lou was in the lead coming into this rotation, the third of four rotations. Now in slow motion. Hip circle, she has to fight the handstand just a little bit. Gets it back where she wants it, right there. She'll place her feet on the bars and then take a front summy, which is a blind landing, very difficult. And she does it very nicely. And there's a the score, 9.55, which clearly keeps her in the lead. And now to floor exercise, Beth Pope from Little Rock, Arkansas, 15 years old, 5 foot 1 and 94 pounds. Beth Pope is currently in fifth place. Very strong tumbler. A couple of dance moves in the corner, and then watch what she does for a mount. She'll take a whip back through to a double back, a very difficult sequence. Here's the whip back, and into the double back. Ooh, does she get up high. I like her aggressiveness. She looks feminine, and yet so strong. She'll have another tumbling pass coming up here. A full and a half twisting front somersault through to another big twisting move. There it is. To a double full twister. Now, in addition to competing for the all-around title, these young ladies are also trying to qualify for the individual event championship. And that'll be shown next Sunday, and that's a week from tomorrow. That'll be the final summer sports festival presentation on ABC Sports. She works with a, a bit of an aloof look on her face, and I like the way she handles it. She just looks like she's doing exactly what she wants to do and doing it exactly how she wants to do it. Now, here comes the dismount. Not bad, not great. Double full twister. Strong movement. Hello, bars. Now, she was in fifth place at the end of the third rotation. We're now in the fourth rotation. Mounts with a straddle over the low bar. She's not happy with what's gone on today. There's a staller shoot. She came in as the person who was the one to beat, and it turns out she has not had a good competition. Her uneven parallel bar routine, however, is flowing along right on schedule. Getting set up for her dismount. Cast front with a half. That's Lisa Zeiss. Now let's take another look in a replay of Lisa's dismount. All right, she's going to move from the low bar to the high bar. Kip, cast. She'll get into her stalder shoots out of this front hip circle. Oh, that's the dismount. Here it comes. Cast, half twist, and then sucks another back somersault out of it. Not a very strong exercise, by the way. There's the score, 8.9 for Lisa's ice. Look at her frown. Oh, she doesn't like that at all. And now, the tiniest girl in the competition. Nicole Kushner from Copley, Pennsylvania. But boy, she's 66 pounds of dynamite. Watch this. Stall her on the low bar. Goes up to the high bar. Cast, full pirouette. Gets up to the high bar. Stall her shoot and into her dismount. 
pass to the front somersault. Here comes her dismount again. She drops into the stall to shoot. Comes back to the handstand. Now places her feet. Now this is a blind landing, really a tough exercise. Front somersault, nearly perfect on the dismount. She is so tiny, it's unbelievable. Just turned 12 years, 13 years old. And her score, 9.15 for Nicole Kushner. And now in the vault, Beth Pope. Boy, she has really moved up. Now in second place in the competition. She'll be attempting a layout Sukahara. There it is, really bounces off the horse. A little step on the landing there, but it's such a high ball. I'm not sure how much that'll bother her. Now look at the explosion she gets off the horse. Really attacks her run. This is a girl to be reckoned with. I think she has great promise. Okay, watch the board now. She's going to compress that board. Bumps the horse real hard. And look at the tightness in her body. Really nice form. Beth Pope from Little Ark, Arkansas. Really having a fine competition. 9.55 for Beth Pope, and it certainly puts the pressure on Mary Lou Retton. Now remember, at the beginning of this rotation, Mary Lou had only a five-tenths of a point lead. And now coming up on balance beam, the leader in the competition, Mary Lou Retton, Fairmont, West Virginia, 13 years old, four foot seven, 88 pounds, and is she a dynamo? She'll do a round off now into a layout back summy with a step out. Now get ready for this tumbling pass. Front summy. And done very well. It's a blind move. It's very difficult to land that thing as solidly as she did. Now remember on the beam, you must work up high, you must work down low on the beam, work forwards, backwards, do a pirouette as you just saw her do a full circle. Must walk upside down or work upside down, or right side up. Must hold some kind of balance. Sounds, sounds pretty demanding to me. Of course, don't even consider the fact that it's only four inches wide, which we've said hundreds of times. There it is, round off. Oh. I must say, in this competition, the balance beam has taken a terrible toll and is solely responsible for the way the standings are now. In the first rotation, no score got out of the eight because every single performer fell on the beam. And it's that kind of event. Yeah! Fabulous routine, except she fell off. Now let's watch in slow motion, see if we can pick up the problem. She takes a round off. Now she'll get her wing years old, four foot, 11 and a half inches tall, 85 pounds. Now she comes into this fourth round in fourth place. Now like most of these young ladies, this new wave that we say is emerging, Kim is an extraordinarily strong company. Double back somersault. She'll be bent only at the waist. There it is, Pike double back, overturns it just a bit. Now, somewhere in her exercise, she'll have to change the mood. Has the music actually changed what it's saying to her? Now, here comes a whip back into a double pull twister. Nice. Just sort of a haughty look. Elegant in their appearance. I certainly like the change that orchestral music has made to women's floor exercise. Much better than just a taped piano. And there comes her change in mood. She dances very well. Very well. Should be a double twister. Oh, great double twister. 
Yes, that's Kim Fisher. Cloud goes for it. Very nice. Good finish for Kim. Now let's watch the dismount again in slow motion. It's going to be a round off backhand spring. As the backhand spring goes into a double pull twister. I play Pennsylvania. Just four feet, three and a half inches tall. 13-year-old Nicole was the smallest yeah, well, athlete Nicole. competing in any sport in Syracuse. Here she is competing in the finals of the floor exercise. Enjoy. Nicole Kushner from Pennsylvania at the age of 13, four feet, three and a half. She'll be 16 by the time of the 84 Olympics in Los Angeles. It'll be interesting to watch her progress. shoulder strength. Here it goes, dislocate, straight arm shoot to a handstand. Now that's one of the requirements on rings. You have to swing to a handstand. There's a back up rise, straight arm shoot to a handstand. Now you notice he has very little swing in the rings. That's why they call them the still rings. Here's a whip it through to an Olympic cross. It's a little different. Normally you see an iron cross. So his body's straight. There's a backward roll. And now he'll get ready for his press to a handstand, which is another requirement. And he does it with straight arms and straight body. Very nice. Now he'll prepare for his dismount. There's a giant dislocate to a handstand and a half in, half out. Well, a fine routine by Mark Casso here in his hometown where he has become really something of a local folk hero. The crowd really responds to his performances. Now he's going to need a 9.3 to take the lead. Well, Gordon, let's watch that strength move again. There's the Olympic cross. He drops in, his shoulders are turned, unlike the iron cross where your body's straight. Is that more difficult, Kurt? I think it is. Here he does a back roll, right to an L, and get ready to press for his handstand. And remember, he does a straight arm, straight body press, which is extremely difficult. And it's difficult because he keeps his arms straight. It's very easy to do a hollow back press, which is a bent arm press. Now here's his dismount. It's a half in, half out. He does a half twist on the first somersault and a half twist on his second somersault. There's his high dislocate. Now here comes the half twist. Half twist there on the first somersault, half twist there on the second. And a fine finish for Mark Casso here in his hometown. Remember, he needs a score of 9.3 to take the lead. And there it is, a 9.45. Mark Casso, now the ring champion of the National Sports Festival. Mark mentioned two parts to his rehabilitation, the physical and the mental. Said his dad threw him out of the gym this Christmas because he was so spooked. Tremendous for his mental recovery. The People's Choice here in Syracuse. Willie Gallimore, the great running back of the Chicago Bears. We're now vaulting. Ron uses a Sukahara with a full twist in a layout position for his first vault. Now that's a cartwheel back in a straight body position with a full twist, named after Mitsuo Sukahara from Japan. And I tell you, in my opinion, this guy's the best vaulter in the world, and you'll see why in a second. Well, he's won the National Collegiate Championships three times straight. Well, watch the spring he gets off the horse. Oh, oh my! Five. He gets such explosive power off the board. What a landing! Oh, I'll say, that was perfect. Absolutely dead solid on his land. And look at the crowd respond. Everybody is on their feet. 
You know, this is a very knowledgeable crowd here at the sports festival. Well, you see Ron's hand right there. He's got a little tape on it. That's because he injured it in the rings event and warm up. So he had to scratch rings and he also scratched Pommel Horse. So he's, I'm sure he's pretty pleased with that, that ball. Oh, for sure. He had such a weak showing in the all around to come back so strong. Take it, Kurt. Well, I said he does a Sukahara vault. Now watch this. It's a cartwheel back with a full twist off the end of the horse. And look at that height. Perfect landing. Well, Ron Gallimore is out there taking a bow from the crowd because, well, here it comes. It's going to be a perfect score, a 10. Ron Gallimore gets a 10 in the vaulting. The crowd responds so strongly. Now, Ron's second vault is the same thing without the full twist. He does a layout Sukahara vault. There it is. You have to do two different vaults. Another nice landing. Oh, a terrific ball. With that slight hop, he probably can't get a 10, but it just might be the second best ball I've ever seen. Frank Ender, the judge, saying, yeah, nice ball, Ron. Well, the reason he didn't use the full twist on the second ball is that you have to do two different balls in this competition. It's the finals. Well, the average of those two balls, of course, is the score that he'll receive. The crowd responding so strongly to a fine performance by Ron Gallimore here in the balling event. And there it is, a 9.9. .9. Gives him a 9.95 average. What a day's work. Well, here's Brian Meeker. He can't... Long vaulter. He's a fast runner, and he gets a good lift off the horse. There's a Sukahara full in a tough position. 